Now, like many scientific inventions, once it had been invented, there was a lot of argument. Did Humphrey Davy discover it? Did somebody else? George Stevenson in the north of England said it was my discovery. And in some ways, although it's very sad, they argued, that's not really the point. The point is that people discovered a way that was safe to do coal mining. Though there has been some suggestions that, like quite a lot of safety apparatus, that when people had got these mining lamps, they started taking bigger risks. Instead of saying, my God, that mine is too dangerous to use, and never going into it, they ventured into places that they wouldn't have gone before. So there were still accidents, but fewer than they would have been otherwise. Now, Davy, when he finished the work, wrote a whole book, which he modestly called Davy on the Safety Lamp. And just to convince you it really is chemistry, if we look inside here, in the front cover, says the Royal Society of London, and it says chemistry. Is that your writing, Rupert? Uh, no, on my fridge. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was flicking through this, and I found two things that really quite excited me. First of all, in the introduction, he says, the names of three persons will be found mentioned in the pages of having assisted, that means helped, in the investigations. And he names two people that I've never heard of. And the third one says, I am myself indebted, means really grateful, to Mr. Michael Faraday for much able assistance in the prosecution of my experiments. Why is that a big deal? Well, he's acknowledging his co-worker, though he does say my experiments, though I suspect Faraday may have done them. But then there's a very nice paragraph here. I put it down so you can see it which says, the result of these labours, that means this work, will, I trust, be useful to the cause of science by proving that even the most apparently abstract philosophical truths may be connected with the application to the common wants and purposes of life. I feel that this has a very important message for us today because it says that whatever abstract science you're doing, it can still help people in their everyday lives. And I think this is really true of chemistry because nearly all chemistry, even if it seems really quite esoteric, in the end may be extremely useful in curing diseases, making new materials or whatever. And so this book here that was published very nearly 200 years ago, in three years' time it is going to be the 200th anniversary of the invention of this lamp this has a message for us today. And there's another message for us today because a very similar sort of lamp is going to be used this year in London for carrying the Olympic flame because it's a way of carrying a flame safely from one place to another and the Olympic flame has to start in Greece. How do you carry a flame safely on an aeroplane without blowing up the plane? And the answer is you use the miner's lamp. So without Humphrey Davy, no Olympic Games. I think you've just seen the, the, uh, the launch of Martin's campaign to get the Olympic flame put in Davy's <laughs> original <laughs> miner's lamp. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's the moment it was, when the idea was born. Hang yeah. on a second. So do we know, the one thing I don't think has come across is the importance of that particular artefact. Like, is that just, you know, one of, one of a million prototypes or is... <laughs> I think it's wonderful and it also I think is very inspiring for modern scientists because it shows that you don't always need a really slick piece of apparatus to make a fantastic discovery and therefore rather than waiting till you can afford to buy something big and expensive you should do the experiment as soon as you think of it and all being well even if it's something that you've just knocked together, here they've used a cork and a piece of gauze, then you might prove it. And if you use things like this, you get there before the competition. <laughs>